So the thing about modern laptops is that there isn't a whole lot that's designed to be upgraded about them, except for one thing that most people probably wouldn't think of. Some laptops out there can actually have their displays upgraded. So we, and by we I mean Alex, ordered a replacement screen for our Acer Predator, whatever this thing is, what is this? The Helios, something, Helios 300. 300. So we can go from 1080 60 hertz to 1080 120 hertz. Also a bigger color gram. Really? Yeah. Well, why don't we do just that? iFixit's Manta Toolkit comes with 112 bits, including standard ones like Philips and Flathead, but also specialty ones. Check it out today at the link in the video description. So much like many of Alex's videos these days, he doesn't appear to have done a whole ton of planning. In fact, he hasn't even opened the package for the replacement screen, but you validated that this works? Um, forums have said it should work. Forums have said it should work. Okay, yeah, hopefully. I figure if this one doesn't work, we also have a Dell G3 that also should work. So with this. Yeah. <laughs> There's a couple of key things that you need to look out for. One is the actual physical size of the display that you're buying. But there's more to it than just, oh, I've got a 15.6 inch laptop, I buy a 15.6 inch panel and bippity boppity. Because there's also the mounting points of which there are many standards. And also there are a shocking number of display interfaces for laptops. So hopefully we're gonna have some luck today. Why don't we, should we, should we unbox this first? That's the one thing I fix it kits don't have. Oh, nice. I think this will work. Ha <laughs> ha. It said on the eBay listing that it should also work for this and some Dell laptop. So we'll see, I guess. I mean, especially given that back when we reviewed the Helios 300, as I recall, we said pretty much the only issue with it was that the screen wasn't that great. Yeah, pretty much. So you guys gotta remember, when you buy an LCD display assembly like this, it includes the front glass, the actual LCD in the middle, and also the backlight. So we should be able to address the fact that it's 60 hertz and the fact that the backlight isn't particularly bright. And then this says, don't touch. Oh, like was I really not supposed to touch it? Yeah, I figured we might as well liquid metal it while we're in there, so. Let's just replace the display and call that the project. But today. it could be just a bit quieter. It's not even a loud laptop. Have you uh, like Googled anything about this? Do we need to pop these rubber doohickeys off? Or like, what's our deal here? I don't know. There we go. I'm good, I'm clear. Why are things assembled with clips? Hold on, hold on. Well, that was easier than I expected. This might be the shortest Linus and Alex do a weird thing adventure yet. There's no way it's just that easy. Cool, okay. So those mount points look pretty similar. That interface looks pretty darn similar. So you can check that out there. Still plenty of time for us to break this. Should we get some more tape to put on there? Uh, yes, based on that it just slipped out. The other cool thing about this is that there's lots of reasons why you might want to replace the display in your laptop other than, you know, being on the lookout for a performance upgrade. Like, oh crap, that's not the right spot. For, oh shoot. Uh, like for example, it's a pretty common issue to end up with an outline of your keyboard scratched into your glass. So for 55 bucks, you can get the thing as good as new. That's freaking awesome. Okay, hold on. We may have spoken too soon. Is it a touch wider? No, it's the same. Okay, what's going on here? Maybe I just didn't pay close attention to how this came out. Oh, I think it just shifted a little. Yeah, these just shifted. Oh, uh, okay. So that's fine. If, yeah, if you wanna hold that. So you just wanna make sure before you screw it in, these little pieces right here, you wanna make sure those are popped all the way through. So you can see the, the frame, like the brace thing here. It's not quite aligned. See, now it's popped through. So we should end up with a nice flush mount. Now, whoa. So uh, we don't even have to put the bezel on in order to, what? No way. That easy. <laughs> Dang. All right. So first thing we'll test is the brightness buttons then, I guess, right? Wait, are they working? It, it doesn't look like it's doing anything. Um, but let's go ahead and change it to 120 hertz, see if it works. So this is a handy dandy little utility by ToastyX called Custom Resolution Utility. And as far as we've been able to find, it's the only one 
that allows you to actually set custom resolutions and refresh rates when you have Intel integrated graphics and an NVIDIA dedicated graphics card running in like hybrid GPU mode. It's really frustrating. The Intel utility has an interface for it. You can key it in. And then from my experience anyway, it just spits out errors for the most part. Yeah, it just says like bandwidth not available or something. Which is ridiculous because you could even set something lower in some cases and it'll be like, oh, maximum bandwidth exceeded. Uh, oh, for crying out loud, why always? Didn't even warn us either, I just hit restart. One eternity later. Uh, quick, quick, get over here. It, it rebooted once already, but it's... it's uh, what? That is... Definitely 120 hertz smoothness. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? It's beautiful. So we can go ahead and pull this off. Ooh, that is a much, much nicer display than what was on here before. We should probably like fire up a game or something then, right? Oh, for crying out loud. Oh, I managed to walk into a trap already. That, uh, okay. Uh, <laughs> gaming in 2018, ladies and gentlemen. So there you have it. There's not really much else to say. Everything that's good about high refresh rate 120 hertz gaming is now officially good about this laptop. And all you have to lose is 55 Canadian rubles, about a half an hour of your time, assuming that you're totally incompetent. And well, brightness adjustment, which is sort of the biggest problem, but uh, something that if your use case is predominantly gaming, I think you still might want to consider. Speaking of things to consider, our sponsor. Rosewill's Prism S500 case offers RGB lighting with a sleek and unique design at an affordable price. It's got dual LED RGB ring fans that emit more light to your internal components. That is sort of the point of RGB fans. It's got a tempered glass panel to show off your internals, not to mention the beautiful RGB. RGB is kind of a theme here. It's got a top power supply mount and shroud to help tuck away extra cables for easier cable management. And it's got an RGB front strip for still more RGB. Check it out at the link in the video description. So thanks for watching, guys. If you disliked this video, you can hit that button. But if you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, or maybe consider checking out where to buy the stuff we featured at the link in the video description. Also down there is our merch store, which has cool shirts like this one, and our community forum, which you should totally join. I can't believe how smoothly this went. Yeah, that was It almost takes the fun out of it. Almost. I mean, this puts the fun back into it. This is great.